Okay, welcome back to uh, SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of the OpenStack Summit here in Portland, Oregon. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Jeff Frick, who's here with us, and this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise, and my next guest is a startup, CEO of a startup, uh, SaltStack, Mark Chen. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. First time nice in theCUBE. I always have uh, loved startups. Um, we had uh, HP on earlier, um, Sar Gilai, who runs all of the cloud for HP, and, I asked him the M&A question, because every startup, you know, possibly one exit is M&A. I mean, obviously, it's a growing cloud market, so. But you guys, you know, no one ever says we're being, starting a company to just be sold, but you know, it is one of the liquidity side of it. So we're always interested in startups, because that's where the action is, right? And then people want to know, what are the new hot startups? You guys are having a great presence here, so first, tell, tell the folks out there about your company that you're leading, where it came from, how it started, and kind of where you are in the OpenStack Summit event here and what you're doing here. Yeah, Salt's had a good, uh, a good startup story thus far. Uh, we began in February 2011, uh, really as an open source project um, that was developed out of the concept that there were, uh, there was a huge void in the, er in the area of uh, configuration management and remote execution. And so my co-founder and partner, Tom Hatch, developed a technology that was focused on developing a solution that would provide scale, speed, flexibility in this particular space, and it was all based on this fundamental premise that we could communicate faster than other other tools that were in the space. So we've had a good rise. Uh, February 2011, we open sourced the technology. The adoption within the community began to grow pretty rapidly thereafter, and uh, today we're sitting right around 400 active contributors to our community. Wow. Um, last year, at the end of uh, 2012, uh, GitHub named SaltStack to their top 10 list of uh, communities with the most active contributor base, uh, diverse contributor base, um, and uh, we were right behind OpenStack, in fact. So it was a, it was a good sort of uh, nod to the cap uh, to, to SaltStack there. Talk so about the product, what market you guys are in, and, and specifically the problem that you're solving. Yeah, broadly speaking, it's the IT operations management market. Uh, specifically, we focus on remote execution and configuration management. So, uh, and then there will be other solutions that follow along that, fundamentally with that platform of. And what's their pain point on, the, on that particular area on the config side? What specific things are you coming in nailing? Yeah, so uh, again, speed uh, is the first element there, is being able to quickly uh, you know, send out commands and collect information from the infrastructure, uh, being able to scale uh, to the largest enterprises that are out there, so. It, Mark, it's interesting from a startup perspective, um, it seems that the landscape seems to have changed with open source, you know, to either start an open source project, which I don't know, was that originally started as just, I'm trying to solve a problem and I think this is a better way to do it, or using an open source project as kind of the kernel of your company idea, mm -hmm. which is very, very different than what used to be where you try to, you know, write some, write some piece of code and that was the that was the crown jewels and that's what you wanted to protect. Yeah. Talk a little, little bit about that journey and how that happened and why you chose that path. Yeah, we're really benefiting today because of uh, you know the maturation of a couple of different movements. One, obviously open source has become a more widely adopted way to begin a, com a commercial entity and that's what we've been able to do uh, with that particular wave. And then the other wave is obviously the wave of configuration management, which is still a very nascent market for, uh, for us. So for us, the idea was uh, you know, to begin as an open source project, to very quickly disseminate and to find out if the technology was viable. And fortunately for us, the, uh, you know, the community responded in the affirmative. Yeah. Uh, so we've been able to, uh, to take that and, and really run with it as a business strategy. Yeah. Uh, we've, uh, we've just commercialized the technology. Uh, as of late, and, and that's going to market, and we have, uh, you know, we've got paying customers today that are actively using it, and you uh, know, are very happy. So, and then, w and then what about being kind of an active in an active role running an open source uh, project? Yeah, and then how, and then trying to expand that or marry that or integrate that with the lar some of the larger ones like the OpenStack. Talk a little bit sure. about 
you know, you got a huge community with a lot of active contributors that right. you're kind of keeping wrangled and, and on sure. track. And then now you've got this this bigger kind of framework within OpenStack. How is that working out? Yeah, I mean, it's a balancing act, right? You know, you've got, uh, you want to make sure that you maintain and you keep uh, the active uh, contributors of your community very happy. Uh, and I think that that's uh, a key element to any successful open source company that then commercializes. Um, you know, it's an interesting thing when you look at sort of the management team that I've come up from a proprietary background and Tom has come obviously from the open source side of the house. And we marry those two mindsets together into, you know, effectively salt stack as a commercial entity. Um, so we bend over backwards to make sure that our community is very happy, that they're responded to, uh, that their contributions are valued and incorporated into the core product. Uh, but then at the same time, you know, we're very open about the fact that we have uh, a very direct commercial strategy in place. We want to be viable. We want to be around for years to come, you know, providing great technologies to not only the community, but then also to large enterprises that would use our software. Yeah. Uh, Mark, so talk about the, talk about the, the uh, competition and what's going on in the market. A lot of CIOs out there, a lot of service providers. This is obviously on their agenda. You got self-provisioning, you got software scaling, you know, with, with the cloud, for example. Um, talk about the competition mm -hmm. you guys have and how you, you guys are differentiating in that market. Sure. So when you look across the landscape, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty broad landscape, uh, frankly, in the IT operations management space. Uh, I think that traditionally, uh, you know, I've come from the background of working with companies like Altiris, uh, where we were a systems management player and we focused on the desktop and we had some uh, server elements to that as well. You've got uh, other large traditional enterprise players that have been in the space, Microsoft, Symantec, EMC, <laughs> and so forth, right? Uh, and, and so they've been around for quite a while. The way I like to articulate our position in the market is that IT operations management is undergoing a renaissance and SaltStack is participating in that renaissance there. And so you've got players like Puppet and Chef and uh, even CF Engine that have been around for 12, eight and six years respectively, uh, trying to you know, partake of this open source uh, you know, DevOps movement. And they've brought good products to the market. And uh, I believe that Salt is a continuation of that trend. It's still very early. Uh, but we, we think that we have uh, some feature sets that enhance and obviously differentiate us in the space. What about some of the customers you guys are working with right now? What are the early use cases and how you guys, uh, obviously going to market as a startup, you don't have a lot of resources, you, you got to be resourceful. <laughs> um, so you, normally the strategy is pick, pick a beachhead, come in, get a position and then sequence to a broader position. What is that use case that you guys are seeing specifically? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that the open source uh, uh, I'm sorry, the OpenStack uh, play is one that we've seen with, uh, with a couple of companies where they're deploying OpenStack very successfully with SaltStack. It's part of the reason why we've decided to sponsor and, and participate here in this conference is that we see obviously that wave moving forward and SaltStack is able to enable organizations that are looking to move onto that particular platform uh, and to deploy it very quickly and effectively for them. That's just one use case. Um, you know, we continue to see you know, traction with companies that are looking for uh, an enhanced configuration management solution that enables them to do the job quicker, faster, that scales out uh, to a much That's greater on extent. on premise? Uh, at this point on premise, and then coming out with a SaaS based solution here in the next, uh, you know, next little <laughs> while. So, yeah. yeah, that's always a challenge. You you know, it's always a challenge. The cloud is, is growing like crazy. We heard HP talk about that as well, uh, NetApp and whatnot, and storage has been a problem, and NetApp's addressing that. We had Ceph on earlier. Um, how do you deal with legacy, um, legacy environments? I mean, that's always a challenge in a lot of these enterprises, a lot of check boxes. That's right. Um, or are you guys more greenfield, open source? Uh, how do you guys look at that? Yeah. You know, I think that the market is still split pretty evenly where you've got about 50% of, uh, of the enterprises that are using the legacy solutions that you just described and 50% that are moving more towards uh, either their own in homegrown solution or something that's sort of brought to the market like a puppet chef or a salt. Um, so the way that we address it is that we can certainly extend and enhance a lot of the things that are being done with legacy solutions and systems. Uh, our orchestration and remote execution tool enables them to do things much faster. Um, even if they're using some of the contemporary tools like Puppet or Chef, you can use SaltStack to extend those out very rapidly as well. You know, if they've got a manifest or a recipe that has been built through one of those tools, SaltStack, in many cases we found, uh, because of our orchestration and remote execution, allows them to deploy that very quickly as well. Yeah, orchestration is really a key thing, and you mentioned OpenStack earlier as a, as a key bet for you guys. We had the Maranta CEO on theCUBE mm -hmm. yesterday, and mm -hmm. they're seeing great success uh, with deployments, and they're now over 300 people, and, and essentially what he was saying, I'm paraphrasing, not, that's not a direct quote, is, 
hey, people want OpenStack, and right. they want us to come in and turn key, not just small little POCs, but big production environments you know, at some scale, and they need help. Right. That's a really big issue for them, and so you know, OpenStack has a lot of demand, not a lot of resources, so how do you fit into that trend? One, do you believe that's a good trend, or is it a real trend, um, and how do you guys engage in that marketplace where people are saying, hey, you know, just help us, we don't really know, have the expertise or, or know what to do. Yeah, we do. Um, so, and, and I think that we're fueled largely by the fact that uh, SaltStack has such an active and open, you know, community that comes in and contributes to the work that we're that we're actually a part of. Um, so, to come in and to be able to find new and unique angles and ways that we can help organizations, we've got a lot of case studies that are out there. People that are using it on the front lines in their companies that are telling us, this is the effective way to deploy it, or here's another angle, yeah. here's another idea. So, cool. So. Take, take a step back, take your CEO hat off for a second, startup hat, and for the folks out there that are looking at the, at the, at the stream here and following us this week, explain to them what's happening at OpenStack. Obviously, huge popularity. This <laughs> is our first cube here, obviously we bring the cameras because you know, it's crossing over mainstream, as we said yesterday, we blogged about it, uh, is it is an inflection point, it's actually going mainstream, there's a lot of real interest, a lot of users here. Um, but in your, in your own words, describe what is this all about? Why is OpenStack Summit so popular? And, and the projections for the next show is going to be pretty big too. So why is there so much action in OpenStack today? Yeah, I mean, I think it comes down to innovation. I think that uh, a new solution uh, has come to market. Uh, Clayton Christensen from Harvard Business School is one of our advisors. And uh, he talks a lot about disruptive innovation in the market. And so, uh, you know, I look at the OpenStack movement and I say, uh, this is about new tools that are coming to market that unify infrastructures that provide organizations, large enterprise organizations or small, uh, with a t with a tool set that can help to s further unify that infrastructure and, and build new and build new ones and build new ones. Frankly, yeah, adding on top of what they've exi you know previously used and, and moving forward with new ones. What advice would you give other uh, entrepreneurs out there, since entrepreneurs like to share, um, <laughs> uh, share some, some uh, insight into, and it's open source. And, and, and it's and open, open right? source, some, uh, <laughs> free knowledge. You, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are attacking, and obviously a good, good spot, automation's really key, and that's going to uh, be a big white space. What other white spaces are out there that, that you see for, that entrepreneurs can say, hey, you know what, I want to really get in here, I want to participate, I want to write some code, I want to contribute to the, the community, but where are the opportunities to start a company that you see that are, that are just sitting there, low-hanging fruit? Wow, that's a great question. Um, you know, I always say three things. I say, you know, look at the market, look at the platforms, and then choose your team wisely. Uh, and I think that when you get those three elements together, great things will happen. Um, you know, I obviously had a bias for the infrastructure and operations management space because of my days at Altiris. Um, you know, I took a little hiatus to go into banking at Morgan Stanley, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. You know, everyone <laughs> everyone does, everyone gets drunk once in a while. That's something, <laughs> that's something bad. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. You know, you, you got the names. You, know, you got the names you, there. You, so. That's okay. You're forgiven. <laughs> you're in the cube. <laughs> you're back, Ultimately, you're back that, among the hey, you know, uh, every, you know, IT ops man. Everyone, I was, I was, exactly. I was talking to my banking. friend. A lot yeah. of young kids coming to Harvard. They're not going to banking. They're going into big data. That's right. Exactly. You know, all the quant shops are not going to Wall Street. They're going to big data. That's yeah. where it's that's at. That's the new new hot thing. That's where it's at. So I do have a bias for infrastructure, I think that it's always going to be a part of, of what, what folks will need to do. Um, and I do think that there will be some interesting angles there, whether it's monitoring, whether it's uh, you know finding some add-ons to uh, the existing infrastructure players. I think that those are all so one of the things that the, uh, during the keynotes, uh, we were very impressed as the users were coming forth here at OpenStack talking mm -hmm. about you know, real deployments. There's not a lot mm -hmm. of vendor hype, real deal happening, mm -hmm. a lot of signal, not a lot of noise here. So mm -hmm. Bloomberg was up there and they're talking about OpenStack and then below OpenStack and above OpenStack, there's action going on, obviously below is the plumbing, mm -hmm. a lot of action going on there, and then above the stack, mm -hmm. you're seeing more of the application uh, areas. Uh, what do you see above the stack, um, above OpenStack that needs a lot of attention right now or, or our opportunities? Gosh, that's a great question. I'm not sure that I'm. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, from a from a uh, uh, manageability standpoint, I think that, you know, you're, you're going to certainly need solutions that are going to help to deploy, uh, uh, you know, the systems yeah. that are going to be coming to market. So. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you a different question then, since you uh, had a little uh, banking experience. Right. Um, uh, a lot of the analysts that we follow, mm -hmm. obviously Goldman, I brought up Goldman, I had to dig Goldman, you know, but they, they, they're doing their job, but the old school analysts are collecting data, they're looking mm -hmm. at the tech industry from a different lens, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's some old data, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you had a traditional, uh, 
licenses, mm -hmm. and, licenses, uh, metrics. Old measures and but metrics. we're we're transforming to a modern infrastructure now. And you mentioned some of those things right. in, in your comments. I mean, whole new way to do business, SaaSification mm -hmm. really is about software as a service, mm -hmm. cloud should be just this invisible resources just working. And so that's going to take some time. You know, obviously infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, variety of tooling, et cetera, et cetera. What, are, what do the analysts need to look at for someone on, you know, looking at IBM and HP and trying to figure out where the puck will be, as they mm -hmm. say. So mm -hmm. you know, how should the, these analysts look at future positions and competitiveness um, like for example, Goldman was you know, downgraded HP because of the quote PC margins. Yeah. But the world's changing, that might be zero, and that might be okay, right. as I was saying. But I mean, how do you look at that, and how would you, you know, advise analysts to saying, hey, if you want to look at who's going to be the winner in the future, right. here's some characteristics that you should look for. Yeah, so um, I believe that uh, you know, there's a shift in organizations. I mean, we're often seeing now within large enterprises that uh, that, that shift of power is moving away from, well there's obviously still power within the CTO, CIO office there, but the users, the end users, in our case the sysadmins and the DevOps professionals are the ones that have a lot of influence over buying decisions there and the technology that they're using. And oftentimes they're moving more towards open source initiatives because they can use those very quickly and easily in the organization. Another trend that I'm seeing is sort of this concept of sort of stealth IT. Uh, the way that you buy your software increasingly, I think, the enablement, we talk about in technology and infrastructures on demand, the ability to actually have a technology that you can start using and pay for very quickly without a lot of barriers from legal, from operations and so forth. I think that if you can get those models right, that you're at least assured of a good fighting chance to have a successful technology. And that's assuming obviously- And a good competitive advantage. And competitive advantage as well. If you can certainly have obviously the technology platform first and then the uh, what I call frictionless entry into an enterprise, uh, those those types of things will win, I think, long term. Great, great. So. Uh, final question for you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, this is Thank great. Um, yeah. Final question, next year, obviously as you grow your organization, talk about some of your goals uh, for the yeah. company and what are some of the things you guys want to knock down and nail down over the next yeah. 12 months? Yeah, so in 2013, the commercializ commercialization of SaltStack uh, will have happened, will be, uh, <laughs> you know, knock on wood that, uh, that will be uh, viable and successful. Uh, you're going to see some interesting partnerships and alliances that are coming forth that are already taking place and shape at this point in time. Um, you know, moving forward, I think that you're going to find um, you know the open source community continue to support and stand behind what SaltStack is doing as a company, and that will further serve to fuel visibility and adoption on the commercial side of things as well. Um, you'll see an expanded uh, suite of products uh, and technologies as well that I think will be quite interesting to the market that will show uh, obviously a broad base uh, uh, and capability to manage infrastructures from. So look for some good things <laughs> from SaltStack moving forward. All right, well, yeah. Mark Chen inside theCUBE here, SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of OpenStack. The big guys are here, but also a lot of startups. He's one of them, hot startup here, SaltStack. Uh, keep, we'll keep an eye on you, congratulations Thank to you. for your sponsorship here and your participation in OpenStack, uh, great stuff. I'll be right back with our next guest here on SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of theCUBE at OpenStack Summit. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>